All right, guys. Oh, we're back again. What's that? No, it's not. It's a uh, little uh, cigar. Bob's back again today with uh, my brother-in-law Corey. It's another really nice day in North Carolina, except for some jackass out here shooting his guns off like hell. And uh, I'm worried it's, it's going to. I'm worried it's going to interrupt our damn, uh, you know, cigar review. We're going to have to go crazy on somebody if they don't stop oh, this shit. Here we go. But uh, today we're going to be doing an interesting review because we're going to be trying two separate cigars. Corey's going to be trying the new Room 101 Fudo Mayo that's put out exclusively for JR Cigars uh, by Matt Booth in Room 101. And I'm actually going to be smoking this right here, folks. This is the new Zombie Apocalypse uh, Red Maduro. So this thing right here looks really oily and it's an extremely dark wrapper. Uh, it's a 5x52, it's a Nicaraguan Puro, so it's supposed to be really full bodied. <clears throat> the cigar I reviewed the other day was the um, the other new line uh, by Viaje, which was uh, the Antidote, and that was really strong too. <clears throat> but I think this is going to be actually a little bit stronger than, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit stronger than the one I reviewed the other day. So we're about to, we're about to do a cut and light on these sticks, and we're going to tell you what we're getting out of them. Let me go ahead and cut mine and take notes because <clears throat> this zombie red maduro is extremely limited they only make them once a year and they make them in very small batches uh, so you know I don't know the price point on this cigar everywhere because it's probably going to be different at your cigar shops uh, at JR's I want to say it was probably 10 or 11 dollars a stick um, but you know Another cigar shop may charge a little bit different, so I don't want to give you an exact price point on this cigar. But all I want to say is it's probably going to be between $10 and $11. And considering that they're exclusive, uh, I mean, they're not exclusive, but they're very hard to find, you know, the price may go up really quick. So, you know, if you get a chance, snap some of these up before they get gone, because they only put out once a year in very limited batches. And as he was saying about the Fiat of Mayo, um, now this one is exclusive to JR's. Uh, one of the reasons why I picked this up is because a good friend of ours, uh, Andrew Mace, was smoking one of these in our uh, uh, in his father's garage, and it, it smells wonderful. So hopefully it tastes as good as it smells, and, uh, and true cut and light. Let's find out. It's so damn windy out here, Mike. Four flame lighters having trouble over here. I think we finally got them lit. That's really windy today. I mean, it feels good out here, but it's just like probably 15 mile an hour, 20 mile an hour winds today for some reason. But mine's like a Perfecto. It's not a double Perfecto. It's a 5x52 Robusto, but it was actually tapered on the end, if you look right here. Uh, it was tapered on the end, kind of like the um, the Antidote series that the uh, Viaje puts out. So, uh, you know, I don't know if I mentioned in the beginning, but this is actually put out by Viaje. And uh, the, the line's called the, Azo the Zombie Apocalypse. Um, but this cigar right here, I'm about to get a, get an exhale off of it, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Sorry about smoke, by the way. And meanwhile, Corey will give you a little rundown on what he's getting out of his cigar real quick. I figure we'd take, you know, a minute or two, like, kind of burn down a little bit. Mm -hmm. Get us into the full flavor of cigar. But as far as the first part of the light, um... I'd say it's a fairly spicy cigar. It's uh, got kind of a bite to it. So uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, guys. That dickhead is still firing off his gun. <laughs> so I'm going to have to talk a little bit louder. <laughs> but uh, I just nose exhaled this son of a bitch, and it's strong as shit. I mean, this thing is extremely full-bodied. It's got a little bit of a bitter cocoa-y taste right now. <clears throat> But, uh, I mean, this thing's full, full of pepper and spice. I mean, full of pepper and spice on the nose exhale. That's a tasty cigar. Yeah, guys, I did a review on this one a little while back, yeah, but is... Corey wanted to do one himself. And we figured it'd be good for, you know, somebody else to do a review on one and try it as well. And, uh, you know, Corey, so like, you, good like you said, yeah, it smells really good. And this, I'll tell you right now, if you're... If you're one of those that likes to smoke cigars, but you know you go into a limited, you know you may not have you know some kind of scrubbing system in your in your garage or wherever you may smoke, so you're kind of limited to how long you can smoke. 
you know, and some people may smoke, you know, regardless of how much they smoke. So, me, you know, I end up having to prop my door open or something like that just to get it all out. You know, but with this, the the flavor of that smoke and the way it smells, I mean, it, it's not it's not horrible. So it's it's not like some things like I hate to say it. I mean, it's a good, trusty, reliable cigar, but the Cuban Counterfeit is one of those that just smells bad. It does have a very just, distinct smell. And, it, and they don't taste too bad as long no. as you get good batches. It's right. just a very good tasting cigar. It just doesn't smell. Doesn't Ooh. have the best smell. Like uh, <laughs> you know, like some places you walk into, you know, and it just smells like uh, you know certain cigars just smell incredible. Certain ones just smell like ass. So, and this is this is like the true cigar shop. Yeah. You, know, you walk into it, what you smell is what you get, and this is exactly what I have in my hand. So, the only thing is, like in his previous review, it is a pricey cigar, but I mean, the only reason to that is because it is exclusive and it is a very limited supply. Um, we haven't done any research as far as how big the batch was, but uh, I'm sure if uh, people start tasting these, they're, they're probably going to go and start buying them up. Yeah, that one Corey's got is an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper on it, so that really uh, adds to the flavor. And uh, man, this Nicaraguan Puro I got, mm. I'm not shitting you. I'm used to smoking strong shit, and this cigar is really fucking my nose up, man. I'm telling you. My, my nose and my throat. But it's incredible. I mean, it really is. It's incredible. So if you get a chance to, to uh, you know, pick up some of these, by all means, get them before they go out this year. Because I don't know. Um, this is my first time trying these, uh, you know, zombie blends from uh, Viaje. And every year, I'm sure the blend's a little different. So I have nothing to compare it to from last year. Now, what I understand is... They started coming out with these blends in 2011, and every year they've put it out a limited release of these uh, zombie series. So, so it's you know, a yearly release then? Yeah, once a year they release these, I believe, is bad. what I read. It's almost like the, uh, what was it, the, it was that, the one that always comes out in Halloween. Oh, the uh, that's the uh, Tatuaje Monster Series, which is another really good stick. Now, that that one, that that's not for the starter smokers. No. I'll tell you that right now. Not that's, at all. You know, th this guy smokes cigars, I mean, on a ridiculous level. Me, you know, with this being a very pricey cigar, as well as like the number nine and the, the Padron series and everything like that, you know, for your not, your everyday, you know, smoker, it, it, this is a perfect cigar. But, you know, yep. you, you just got to, I guess. Look at the burn on Corey's cigar, too. Oh, like, yeah. It's, look at that. that it's burning pretty good. And look, we both have Perfectos. I think Corey's is actually a double taper, but he clipped yeah. it. But, you know, this is going to be a slow burner, so. I didn't clip it that much. I mean, I still got some right. of the taper. I don't like clipping a lot because you end up getting into the main wrap, and yeah. then you end up unfolding a, a wonderful cigar, and that just, that, that would end a perfectly good cigar. Right. So let's give it, I'll tell you what we're going to do, folks. We're going to give these cigars one more nose exhale, and then we're going to give you a little flavor profile. And <coughs> Corey smokes killing me. And then we're going to wow. get back to you guys, and we're going to give you a finish, uh, you know, on these cigars and give you a final rundown of what we actually picked up. But uh, go ahead and tell them what you're getting out of yours right now. Well, I can tell you right now, it's it's spicy, so there's a there's a ton of pepper in this thing. It, it's it's not quite a pepper bomb because it still has that rich aroma and flavor. But as far as the uh, the smoke, as some people may say, it's chewy. Um, to <laughs> others, it's I would say a full body. I mean, from you, when yeah. you smoked it, I, I think you would agree. Yeah, that's pretty full. It's definitely definitely not a mild cigar like yesterday. That was, uh, you know, when you nose exhale it, it's, you know, relatively strong. But other than that, I mean, you nose exhale. This one is going to bring tears to your eyes. So yeah. It's very true, very true. It's pretty good smoke, though. <clears throat> as far as the, you know, the wrap, he said the wrap, but I think it's a... Uh, what was the, uh, That's the a filler? mix of Nicaraguan and Honduran fillers, I believe. Honduran. Yeah. So it's a little and bit it's different. Got a, it's got a Mexican binder too, which is really interesting. So. Yeah. I'm not quite used to the you know, Nicaraguan and the uh, Honduran. Yeah. I'm Usually, not... you know, I like Dominican, so that's one of my favorites is Las Antillas. So. But this is not bad. This is, I mean, for a strong cigar, and I don't necessarily smoke so strong cigars too often. This is a really tasty cigar. Mm-hmm. So. Hopefully they keep these in stock long enough for everybody to enjoy one. At least one. You gotta try one. Yeah, you gotta at least try one. 
And it, and if it's not just for the just smoke it, I mean light it and smell it. I mean this thing is I won't say it's potpourri, but it's right. uh, it smells wonderful. It's manpourri. That's what we call it. When you're in your man cave, you want to smell manpourri. You don't want to smell potpourri. Speaking of which, if you want to laugh, go go look up poopery. It, it's the funniest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> the sad part is they make money on it. So That's right. seriously, check it out. It's on YouTube. Just it, it's funny as shit. All right, guys, <clears throat> we're gonna get back to you in a minute. Actually, we're gonna get back to you in probably about 30 minutes when we're about halfway through. Yeah. Um, flavor profile on mine right now is extremely peppery still, extremely spicy, and it's got a little bit of a raisiny, charcoal-y taste, which is really different. So Interesting uh, flavor profile there. Yeah, it is interesting considering it's a Nicaraguan Puro, and I'm getting that, that kind of flavors out of a Nicaraguan Puro. So let me give you a final little shot of this little peewee right here before I, uh, look at that ash, before <laughs> I uh, stop the video, and we'll come back to you guys in about 30 minutes. All right, guys, Cigar Bob and Corey, we'll be back with you in about 30. Later. Cigar Bob. Yep, we're back. I don't have a remote control for this damn camera yet. And I don't have a, uh, you know, a camera girl behind here filming us or anything, so I actually have to stand up and hit record and whatnot. But that's going to change soon when I get a damn, uh, you know, handheld for it, so... We're gonna get control of this camera, so we won't have to keep standing up and uh, you know sitting down every five seconds. Make the videos a little bit better than you know having to run around. And say, hey guys, how you doing? That's right. So, gotta let you know technology work for us, not you know work for technology. But that's that's just kind of passing on backwards. So, either way, um, now that we're back, I mean that right there is awesome. Very very tight burn, very straight ash. And I mean, the, the cigar is awesome. Um, flavor is still there, not quite as peppery. Um, very smooth. I'd say it's got kind of a, a creamy taste to it. I, I'm not really sure as to what you know flavor I would pin on it because, you know, it's just it's just a good smoke. I mean, it, it's hard to beat. You know, well actually I take that back. It's not hard to beat because you you can get a ton of other cigars that, you know, for the price, very tasty. You know, smell great but for this one again being exclusive this I mean I, I don't know how I mean I, I could you know if I could I would I'd probably mail everybody that would see this a cigar just to try this so I mean even yeah. though they are ten dollars a stick I mean, yeah that'd get expensive this, real quick but. yeah it's still good though right I mean even a box I mean you take a box you know most boxes they come with about 20 26 Roughly, usually twenty to twenty two is to twenty to twenty two. So, a box. a, bo a box for this is uh, it's ten cigars, okay, and it's uh, about ninety dollars. So again, it, it is kind of expensive, but I mean, for those that don't smoke that often and like to have a nice, trusty, tasty, you know, rich aroma cigar, th this is this is the ghost stick right here. Yeah, that's I hard did. to. Sorry to interrupt you, but it's hard to inter it's hard to. Uh, appreciate how much ash he's got on this damn cigar right now but i've got about two inches of ash yeah he's it got ha it hasn't fallen off yet so he's, since i lit it that's it he's got the whole damn cigar right there it hasn't fallen <laughs> once now i had a and don't get me wrong i'm holding it kind of weird because I, I i hate it when it uh when it falls off because it's kind of depressing because right. it's like well i hope the rest of us is good that's right <laughs> yeah mine held an ash for about an inch and an inch and a half and then it finally uh, let go but uh, Corey's <laughs> construction that. is definitely really good. Mm -hmm. Really good construction to hold the ash like yeah. that. And, it, and it's not so tight that it's a hard draw. This is a very easy drawing cigar. So it... Oh, there, there it goes. There she goes, folks. So, but back to what I was saying. You know, this is a cigar that... You know, there are cigars out there that you have to punch, that you have to sit there and, you know, needle thread some way, shape, or form to actually get a good draw to even smoke it. But uh, this one, I mean, he... He did a review, and from what I understand, it it didn't have any problems lighting and staying lit and actually getting a good burn. So this one, same thing. I mean, you saw it for yourself. Two inches of burn time, and uh, my ash finally fell off. So, and the the inside. I mean, you can look at the inside. It, it's it, it's actually burning pretty true. You know, you get some cigars that, and a lot of it's to do with you know humidification, yeah. how it's you know handled and whatnot, but. When you have a good, or not good, probably the best way to say is well-made cigar, 
it burns even. You know, you don't want it running. You don't want it right. burning from the inside out. You don't want it burning from the outside in. You don't want to go side. It, it's you want a nice even burn so you can enjoy and appreciate the entire flavor of the cigar. So this one right here, that this one I'd have to say is meeting, meeting and exceeding. So, so it comes highly recommended from me and Corey. Yeah. Now that one I can tell you right now, that one. No for, joke. For the ones that don't smoke that often. I, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you're one that loves strong cigars and you, you just want somebody to punch you in the face, that's it right there. Yeah, this is a hard-hitting cigar. You can't, well, I'd say you can't, but I, I tried Nose Exhale on that one, and that's that's just too strong for me. I just, mm -mm. Yeah, this this Viaje Zombie <clears throat> Red Maduro. I bet you end up being a damn zombie if you smoke the whole fucking You thing. probably would. I'm, I want to tell you right now, if you don't eat a steak dinner and... and, and you know, you're not used to uh, strong cigars. If you don't eat a steak dinner and a baked potato and a salad before you sit down and smoke this, you're going to clay your underwear. I'm not shitting you. So, you know, it, it's going to make you just, you know, your bowels. Does it have gonna... to be steak? It doesn't have to be can, steak. Can they have a burger? Yeah, they could have a burger like we talked about in the last one. A thousand calories is, you know. How about chicken kebabs? That's you could have kebabs. You know, you could have rat kebabs. You could have, you know, squirrel <laughs> kebabs. Whatever. Whatever you think will uh, go, you know, whatever will pair well with you cigar. You just can't have cigar bobs, so. That's right. You know, only the women get cigar bob, and you have to be a very <laughs> special woman to get cigar bob. But uh, anyways, we're going to give you guys a final rundown because we're uh, we're getting short on time and it's getting dark. So, Corey, tell them what your uh, final flavors are out of this stick. You know, final flavors. The uh, I know at the start it was very peppery, almost like a pepper bomb, but not quite that bad. Um, you know, halfway through the smoke, I, I'd say it tamed down quite a bit. Um, Still maintain its rich taste and Shit. aroma. Um, kind of a cream flavor to it. Um, as far as the, the oily and the palate residue, um, I would have to say it's it's not, it's rich. It's not something that, you know, after you get done smoking and it, you just want to wash your mouth out. This is something that's, it's pleasing to the palate. It's, it's very good. So final thoughts, what would you give it out of uh, one to 10? Uh, let's see. So, you know, I, I'd have to say I hate to lower it. I mean, I know the price point is one of those things that, you know, heavily depends on what people buy. But I, I got to say, this is up there. This is at least a nine, you know, for especially for the Roman and the taste. It, it's, it's hard to find a cigar like this, especially, you know, in comparison to like a number nine or a Padron. You know, I mean, ten dollars on a Patron stick. Get you one of these. It, this is pretty good, so I recommend trying. It. All right. Now we got Corey's opinion on that cigar, which is pretty right on par with my uh, last That's my review. Two cents. Corey's two cents is is uh, very uh, meaningful. So my cigar right here, my final rundown in this cigar. <clears throat> I'm gonna give the nose XL real quick, and I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Now we got Ding Dong back with. Uh, Shooting his guns again, and we got, you know, uh, lawnmowers going, birds are chirping. They're ruining my uh, cigar review video. <laughs> All right, so what, what do you think? I mean, I know it's a very strong cigar. It's painful. The pepper and spice is still there, not as pronounced as it was when I first lit it, but it's still there. I've got more of a woodsy, earthy, and a little bit of an oak taste on the finish. Which is really interesting. So we got Corey's children interrupting our cigar yeah, Sorry about video. that, guys. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and end this video. I'd give this probably a nine and a half out of a ten. So uh, you know, do yourself a favor and pick yourself up one of these if you can find them, and uh, you know, give it a try. You know, uh, it's limited release, so you know, go ahead and uh, snap some up before they get gone completely. Anyways, we'll be back with you soon. We're going to review some more sticks soon. Cigar Bob's out. Corey's out. Talk to you later, folks.